Sean, let's take a Welcome off. into the PHNX Sun Devil Show brought to you by the DraftKings Wait. Sportsbook <laughs> America's top rated sportsbook. <laughs> Don't forget to leave a like, <laughs> drop a comment, subscribe, <laughs> wherever you get your podcast. That was <laughs> flawless. I am Anthony Dotry. Joined as always <laughs> by yep. Sean DePaz and Shane Diefenbach. <laughs> Shane Diefenbach, I'm sure, will be back at some point. Um, for the audio listeners, I just revealed that I'm wearing the same shirt as Totri. We had planned this for literally weeks. Weeks. And weeks. For, if you can't see, it is buff jigglypuff aka jiggly buff and shane's feelings shane are was hurt. hurt shane was uh, hurt this is what he gets for leaving for basically two weeks in a row yeah unlucky well we talked about it yeah it's kind of ironic that we had planned this while he was gone for back-to-back weeks and then you were gone for a week yeah and then i'm gonna be gone for a couple days so it's it is what it is shane do you want is, is he just sitting out there like a sad I'm, little boy i'm sorry but you guys are on suspension <laughs> For this, what are you? Don't, don't leave my boy Shane out of this. He wasn't here. You were gone. Oh, oh I've been shot. <laughs> I've been shot. Oh God. Oh, I'm what just... in the damn hell? <laughs> you will. So we had originally. It was my birthday, and instead of getting me something, <laughs> you guys got things for you. Well, you didn't invite us to the my bir- style thing. You didn't. You didn't invite us. I to- complimented you on your shirt. You did. You did. <laughs> You did not invite us to the birthday celebration. What are you talking about? You, you we went to... out for my birthday. Yeah, but we wanted to go to Texas. I was shot right in the face. Oh my oh god. Oh my god. Speaking of Texas. You know um, what? You know what? You know who I went to Texas with? <laughs> you know who I went to Texas with? <laughs> my real friends. Um listen, you just when you weren't here, it was a timely thing. It was um, a timely thing. It was you, you think of the third host of the show. No, 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 no. you were gone for back to back weeks. So and you this, didn't give me one. No, just no. to have. So what had happened was <laughs> No, yeah, no, 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 hold on. Let me let's answer that. You didn't give me one just to have. No. Sean, I didn't get this because I like it. it I got of, it because I liked it. <laughs> you didn't get me for listen. Just do you have. want the background? Yeah. So my friend who was in New York that I ran up with in New York was at an anime convention while you were here or while you were gone. Yeah. And he was like walking around and I, I was like, phone. I was like, I have a phone. Oh, can you get a, can you like touch? I showed touch and he's like, can you get me one? He's like, I yeah. And I was like, should I get one? And he's like, yeah. And they were like, let's mess phone. with Shane. Why, well, why not meme one? I would love one. Well, we had to mess with you. I would have loved one. You can have mine. I would have loved one. Yeah. No. I'm not happy about it. <laughs> okay. Totri, that was executed that was to perfection. <laughs> amazing. I can't I can't wait to watch that back. Maybe even in slow-mo, I think that's gonna be even better. Uh, but we do have a lot of Arizona State to talk about, specifically on the football side of things. If you didn't know, running back Xavier and Valade, um, the Wyoming transfer has been added to the Doak Walker Award watch list, which is an award given to the nation's best running back at the end of the season. Uh, just right off the rip, before this guy has even played a down for Arizona State, what does it mean? We, we, we've talked about him versus Ngata, where mm, the carries yeah. might lie. Um, uh, oh. Yeah, Joe. <laughs> Joe. I, I'm asking myself the same thing. Um, well, so since this happened, I'm going to come off a little spicy. Didn't I just say that he was going to be running back one? Tochi was like, What? Just like that? Yeah. You were, you were pushing back against that. He's going to be RB1. He's going to get a lot of touches. Thank you, Ryan. I think he... <laughs> <laughs> the gift that keeps on giving. Look, man. I think Xavier Valade is going to be a phenomenal running back for Arizona mm. State in the year that he is going to be here. Yeah. However, I don't know. I just don't know why Daniel Ngata is not getting the same kind of love. He, he hasn't shown it like he's good, Valade has. But he's, Valade is going to be RB1. Valaday has produced to a, a very high level at a lesser school and against lesser competition, obviously. But it's not like he was playing. But you don't teach that size. Yeah, yeah. and it's not like he was playing FCS. Like he was playing Wyoming. Josh Allen. Yeah, Josh. Exactly. Best quarterback <laughs> in football. Uh, yeah, we got Joe. What you're looking at. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, like, yeah. I mean, I said it to you earlier today. I was like, the more I think about it, the more I feel like the, the carries are going to end up skewing pretty yeah. heavily towards Valaday. Um, He's just got more experience playing at a Division One level than Ingata. It's just kind of the fact of the matter. And he's got he's produced. Um, so I mean, I think it's good that an ASU player is getting some at, at national recognition. Obviously, these preseason list don't mean a whole lot, um, but it, it's nice just to see that 
you know, it's like you, I feel like a lot of the masses are not very confident in what this ASU football team is going to be. And to see that there is somebody that at least has the expectation that they can produce on a high level. Um, I think that's good. I think it's just it's nice that ASU is getting some positive recognition. In yeah. The media. See, I think I think this does mean something like I think I don't know how many people would have expected when Rashad White declared for the draft and was drafted by the Bucks. How many people would have been like, yep. ASU will have a Doak Walker Award watch list candidate yeah, in that backfield fair. before the season starts. Um, I don't think there was a lot of, I think there were a lot of question marks with Ngata, kind of given what you've said, um, that just the workload um, and the experience just isn't a lot right now. And you look at Valada, you look at his career um, as a Cowboy in Wyoming, 626 um, carries, 3,000 plus rush yards, 19 touchdowns on the ground. 51 passes that he's hauled in and 584 receiving yards. Like The he, way you said, that was the most fun way to say, not fun, but most convoluted way to say catches ever. What? You said 51 passes that he's hauled in as opposed to just saying 51 <laughs> catches. Got to be descriptive, man. You got to get that <laughs> word count up. Uh, I, I, his workload has just been insane, but I am really curious to see what he looks like versus teams like Oklahoma State, teams versus USC. I'm well, curious to see what every FBS team looks like against Oklahoma State this year. Like, yeah, they're going to be really good. Uh, um, but it's also interesting because I, I don't really I don't know a whole lot about what Wyoming's offense has looked like recently. But you have to... It's been Xavier Valley. Exactly. <laughs> My That's what I presume. It's like, it's going to be interesting unless they do what they did with Rashad last year where he was the only running back, basically. Like, if you have a Valade that doesn't have the entire offense on his back and he gets to rest a little bit more. He doesn't have all that wear and tear on his legs throughout the towards the end of the season. It'll be interesting to see if he can be like more, a little more explosive um, and produce at a higher level once he when he is on the field because he's not expected to carry the entire load like Rashad was last year. Now, this preseason list is obviously it I mean it is but it is just a preseason list, but do we have any expectation or any actual reason to believe that he's a candidate on this list? At the very end of the season, like yeah. a legitimate hell yeah, player. he's been five years in the in college football. He you know he had, he had a twelve hundred yard season already, which I mean comparable. It's not insane when you look at like the best of the best, but like Reggie Bush's Heisman Heisman season was seventeen. Don't know. Take it back. Well, Heisman. Like, it, it's a Heisman. <laughs> no, Take it back. But that was seventeen hundred yards yeah. on the ground. Um, that's crazy. In 2019, he had, well, Derrick Henry, if you want to talk yeah. crazy, he had over 2K in college in one year in 2015. But uh, almost 1,300 uh, rushing yards in 2019, like, he's going to be good. And I, I don't think this is terrible for Ngata either because you look at running backs that have succeeded in college football. Like, I was doing some, I was looking at some numbers. That's why I knew the Derrick Henry thing right off the bat. It's because Derrick Henry, he had one incredible year, but the other two years he's sitting behind guys. Like, yeah. like it's usually What's what happens. And, and God is going to get his chance. He's a redshirt sophomore. Like, I don't think this is a bad thing, and I think that's what the coaching staff is probably going to look like. Yeah. What do you think, think a think like. What do you think a successful season, like for Engada, looks like? Not to take anything away from Valade, because we seem to have a somewhat consensus that eventually Valade will take the lead role. Um, what Engada. Huh? And Gata will eventually take. No, the lead. no, no. That Valade will take the lead role. But what is a successful season if that's Valade the case? Valade has the lead role. He doesn't have to take it. He's got the lead role. I right think now. he has to take it. I mean, I don't. I, I think they split carries during the showcase. I think it'll end up. Just saying. Just saying. I mean, showcase, not game, right? Um, but I think I think he has the lead role, but I don't think it's as clearly like. Hit. I think it's closer to fifty fifty than it is. Yeah, but, but being he has the lead role right now. He doesn't. Have I would. To take yeah, it I would expect it to. Um. I don't know what a good season for. I mean, not it's necessarily just, even it's, a good season, but what does a successful season look just like? Just take advantage of your touches. Like it's. I mean, it's kind of. It's hard to be specific because I don't know what the workload is going to look like. But I, I mean, if you if we can look back on the season and be like, oh, you remember that in God of Play? Like he well, has moments. He did that last year. Yeah, just, exactly. yeah. Just star in your role. Yeah, especially like run hard like he did last year. Like find the holes. Be as patient as you were last year. And when it's time to explode, run somebody over. Like he's very capable of that. Um, Joe in the chat saying, really would like to hear X go and give it to you with every one of uh, his first down. Yeah, it's mandatory. <laughs> if you have the name X and you play sports, that song is, you better fucking like it because yeah. it's going to be played almost any time you do anything. Xander Bogarts, um, and there are other, other X athletes that I related to, but I can't think of any off the top of my head. Um, uh, the safety for the Vikings, Xavier Rhodes. Yeah. Is he a safety? 
corner? I think he's a corner, yeah. Yeah, yeah, No, I'm... Defensive player. I think it's going to be... I think the more as the season goes on, we are going to... Like, we hype up the running backs, and we did it yesterday on the the positional breakdown show that we did. Um, If you missed it, go check it out. Talked about just about every running back on the roster um, and the linebackers as well. But I think by the end of the season, we're going to be like, I don't even know why we, like not gave any love to any of the other positions, but like running back is going to be like far and above any of the other positions in terms of production and talent. <laughs> As we thought last year, and yeah. it, I mean, it was, it was Rashad white, but no, we, we didn't expect Daniel got to get touches. And he, yeah. I mean, he had 300 plus yards. Like yeah. he had some moments, but that was also because chip was injured. Yeah. Um, Going back to the whole, like him validate winning the dope thing though, it is going to be interesting to see how much his production is either helped or hurt by Emory Jones being such an effective runner. Because like I feel like he's going to get, depending if, if the offense is designed well, like he'll get opportunities because the defense is going to have to key in on Emory Jones a little bit. But at the same time, Emory Jones might end up taking some away some of that I'm so, touches. I'm just so excited to see what this offense This has like. got college, like NCAA football. This is, yeah, this is old school. All like, over it. I'm running the speed option every single down um, if I'm Herm. Like, so this is I a, hope Herm's not calling the well, plays. You know, this yeah, is interesting. Like Last year, I was looking at the splits for Wyoming's offense. Um, only 160 yards passing per game, almost 215 yards rushing a game. Um, but Xavier Valade split kind of carries, 209 attempts to the second. Titus Swen, uh, 132 attempts. Uh, he had uh, Xavier had 1,063 yards. Titus Swen had 785. But Titus Swen had seven touchdowns. Valade only had six, and that's because Titus Swen, 5'11", 202, Saving Valade, six foot two hundred. Titus is more of a bowling ball. Daniel Angada, uh, 5'9", 200. Yeah, yeah five so nine two hundred. Yeah, more in the in the red zone, so, close to the goal line. Yeah. I mean, I expect more touchdowns. Yeah, you expect those Burrito Express yeah. pounds to be going yeah. somewhere, and it's in the fucking end zone. Burrito Express himself right into the end zone. Mm. Wow. Burrito Express, you said. Burrito self of expression. Okay, man, really. I want him to see him pull out. Like, I want him to go full, like, Chad Ochocinco on his celebrations and just, like, go get Burrito Express out of, like, a little bin he has in the end zone and you just start eating a burrito as a touchdown. Take a selfie. This is a sleeper on the menu. (laughs) Sends a a Burrito Express tweet Mm -hmm. (laughs) from the field. 15 yards. That would be with the most worth it. The most delicious 15 yards. Oh, that would go viral. That would go viral immediately. (laughs) It would be incredible. Um, What do you guys think? Shane, I'll direct this question specifically at you since you seem to be more outspoken on it. Um, what would the odds be on DraftKings for Ngata to have the number one role? Plus 10,000. No. Why plus so a, obscure? Plus 1,000. That's still, I feel like, is that, pretty, Are we saying number one role is in having the most as carries? As in, like, he snaps? would get the most carries over Valade, well, assuming they're both healthy. Okay, yeah, plus 1,000. Wow. I didn't expect it to be that high. Dude, it's a fifth year against a redshirt sophomore. Yeah. I don't know, though. What would you say? You well, I think well, because I think at the beginning of the season. I don't know why you're so stuck. For on sure, that. if Ingata is even if Ingata ends up being significantly better than Valade, which I think significantly better is unrealistic. But um, I think Valade is going to start the season getting the majority of the carries, yeah. um, and so I mean that alone is going to kind of hurt Valade or Ingata's chances in terms of ending up with the most carries, especially if they're rushing five hundred times. Going to be happy in this role. Like I mean, he's fine with it. Like I don't think it's going to be by a large margin, but I. Definitely think he's going to get more carries. I think it's going to look very similar to what I just explained. How right? do you uh, do? Two hundred one twenty. There is anything to like, because I, I like you said, Ingata would probably be happy in that that quote unquote number yeah. two role. Valade probably not because it's his last year. Do you think that plays at all into? I mean, I, obviously, if Ingata is significantly better than Valade, it's kind of fuck Valade's feelings. But like, do you think that there's like in terms of trying to keep the the room, the locker room happy? No, kind of prioritizing Valade at least at the no. start. No, definitely not. These that coaches are coaching for their jobs at this point. That's yeah, true. Herm and they know not that. look at that anyway. It is definitely fuck your feelings at this point. Like, you got to go out in the win. And we talked about it on yesterday's show about potentially redshirting a couple of guys. And you're like, if if these guys are showing you, even if it's like they can be a difference maker for a game or for a couple plays, like, it is what it is. Like, they're going to need to play because you're coaching for your job. Uh, these offensive and defensive coordinators coaching – maybe for the potential head coaching gig yeah. here or head coaching gigs at other universities, depending on what kind of is the fallout um, at the end of this upcoming season with Herman company. But somewhere there was an ad read in there. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code PHNX. And when you make your first deposit, 
going to get a risk-free bet up to $1,000. I'll say it one more time. $1,000. That's not a joke. That's promo code PHNX, only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for more details. Let's talk Camp T for a quick second. Or what? Or lack thereof. Exactly. So I I have never experienced Camp so T, good. so I'm Camp like... Camp Tantazona, man. I'm like, I don't really fully understand the hype, to be honest. Okay, you've, so... You've been, right? Yeah, so, so the team, this was a tradition, I believe, implemented by Frank Cush, right? Frank Cush started it, and this, if you don't know who Frank Cush is, like, the most legendary ASU coach um, on the football field, passed away some years ago, um, but every year, they would start their fall camp um, at... Camp T, Camp Tantazona, um, and that's where they would have like their practices for, I believe, a couple days or a week, um, and then they would end it with a scrimmage. And ASU fans would go up there, they drive. It's beautiful, like the fields in the middle of like the woods and shit. Like it, it's a super dope experience. The pandemic obviously made it so they like didn't go anymore. Um, and then it was released the other day when ASU sent out the practice schedule for the fall that they would not be doing Camp T. Um, that the players would be going, I believe, for a day, for a day. up to Camp Tantazona. They have bonding, I think, they for, yeah. described. Because um, there's cabins and all sorts of stuff up there. But just initial reaction to what's expected to be Herm's last year and not taking the team up to Camp T for, you know, a well, tradition. It's the what, fourth time in fifth years, five years in it doing it, three, three years in a row now. Um, one, the time before COVID was because it was getting renovated, I believe. And then I think... I. I think it's just again because close quarters, like you don't want a COVID outbreak before yeah. the season starts. It makes sense. They're all it's a, they would all stay in cabins, tight packed together. Uh, but I imagine I mean, that's what they're doing it anyways for the one day. Yeah, but I guess they might. I guess if they're only going for a day, they're not. But, in a but you're and also stuff. Camp T is also just not for the players. Like fans come, they talk to fans all the time. Like it's very, it's it's an intimate experience. It's great, but it's part of tradition, right? Like I feel like that's part of what we talk about. Some of these storied programs yeah, across the nation part of tradition. are about history and tradition and whatever over time. Like this is ASU doesn't have a lot of tradition when it comes to sports. Camp T was the one thing that the football program it's not had. Like they canceled it though. Like it's it hasn't happened in four years. It happened in, yeah, three years in a row. Pandemic or not, like I feel like that would be something that you would want to implement, right? Like we haven't the pandemic hasn't been as big of a thing. COVID has not been as big of a thing. Like I feel like as of late. It's obviously I just, I still don't out think there. It's worth risking before the season right now. Like I, I, I maybe just close it off to the public. That's what that's what I'm saying. Is yeah. like you would close it out to the but public. But also, as you said, it's terms last year. Do they really want to bond with that man? Like who cares? Yeah. <laughs> Get a new coach. Implement but next then I year. feel like Ray, if it doesn't happen next year, I'm gonna be peeved. That's a that's Does a Ray thing. You want to feel like even spending that kind of money, like hmm. which is like I say, kind of is a joke, but also like. Do they really want to spend that kind of money? Like, they, they, they might, that might be what it is. It's unlucky, man. Yeah. It is what it is. Like, it's, I think it's dumb. I think ASU football and the fans and the program as a whole could benefit yeah. off of getting back on Josh it. Josh Hunt saying, feels like camp team is needed more this year than ever. I agree, but yeah. I'm glad they're at least going up. For a day. Yeah. This is I just random, Bless but you. I was looking at it. Bless you, yeah. And it does seem pretty wild that ASU's over under is only at six and a half, and over is plus money. I'm hammering it. I'm hammering like, it. Uh, the over? Yeah, the over is plus money at six and a half. You good, dude? I'm you're a pancake man. <laughs> Just keep flipping and flopping, <laughs> brother. Like for the last three months, you've been like, why would you bet the over on their win total? I don't know, man. The more that we've gotten God, closer, it makes the, me the more that we've gotten be a closer. Day water, don't be there at all. No, you can change your mind. I've never Can I change my? Isn't that the purpose of Ross, free will? I'm allowed Roster to like think for myself even and after change. Ray Jones, you're like, no, no, but you're, have you ever placed a bet and you've woken up in the morning with a bad feeling and you're like, you know what, I'm gonna cash out? Not on a team that I'm covering because I have the same feeling about it. I don't. I just, I just, I can't believe how how expressive you are about betting the over now when you weren't two months ago. We've gotten closer I mean, to I kickoff. Wasn't, I wasn't really. I was. Close. I was. I, th I think I chose the under. All I'm saying is I'm allowed to do this because you guys were shitting on me for saying I'm taking the over for sure. Did we shit on? Yes. Me? Oh my god. Definitely a little bit. But in the t at the time, it did seem a little ridiculous. But I think I'm not saying they're gonna go wildly over six and a half. What changed? Literally, what changed since that? 
No, there's. I honestly don't no, remember. Nobody gained or left. I don't remember the time. It was after Emory Jones. It was like oh, two weeks after Emory Jones. Nothing has changed. Sat a little bit. It marinated. I don't know. I think I started to drink. Sit, the, I started to drink the Kool Aid a little bit on the on the running backs. I think the rushing game was. The more we talk about it, I was like, <laughs> the more he's like, yeah, seven games. Like, Sounds yeah, good. Yeah. I was like, because I think it was like, they play, what, 12 games? Dude. And it's like, it, it, it just. Shane's really irritated. I'm just right so now. upset because I went through each individual game and you guys were like, ah, there's no way. I'm, I'm not saying like, you're I'm, 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 I know, I know. But but if you guys at that time would have said, maybe I could see, but it was like, why are you? Well, I, I was. I wasn't as hard as he was. Yeah. I was close. I Like I was said, it wasn't unrealistic. I just, if I had to put my money on it. But now that I'm looking at it and it's plus money and it's like. How much like, plus money? Well, plus 120. So it's not anything crazy, but like, um, I mean. I don't have been done hammered up. <laughs> I think today's show is just to piss you off. No, oh, it started on the wrong foot. Now you guys are just willy nillying everywhere. So. Well, let's talk about an article, yeah, Jeremy mm, Clough, sure, Arizona Republic, um, wrote an article about the potential for ASU and Arizona to wind up in different conferences, given the entire discussions revolving around conference realignment. Um, the potential for a Pac-12 Big 12 merger is seemingly starting to die out, if not already, but that hasn't apparently stopped um, the Big 12 in discussions with other schools, specifically the Four Corner schools, um, about a potential swap. However, the Clough article, um, he had talked with a few people who cover Arizona, and the article just kind of goes on about, does Arizona need ASU, vice versa? Would these schools be comfortable leaving? Um, just based off of you know the article itself, what do you think, Shane, about the potential for these two schools to go in separate directions? Do you think They're, they would never do that? Never. No. I just don't see it happening. It would be so sick if they did, and I just don't think they will. Yeah. I mean, I – that was my gut reaction, and take a shot. But I then I thought about Syracuse, and when Syracuse left the Big East, like, their basketball team was, at, like, kind of at its prime, and so was UConn. Georgetown was was okay. Like, those are the two biggest rivals, and they just fucked off and went to the ACC for the money. Um, and so, I mean – I don't want it to happen. I don't think it's completely unrealistic. I think it's far. I think the fact. I think them leaving together is far more realistic than. than I not. think them both staying in the Pac-12 is far more realistic than leaving to different conferences. I, I would hate it again. I think they they should go somewhere else together. But that's more yeah. realistic than them leaving and going to different conferences. I just. I think. Who do you think needs who more? I think Arizona needs ASU more. Why? Um, the market because at the, well at this point the, at the actual competition doesn't mean a whole lot the football Arizona football is terrible and Arizona basketball is way better than ASU so it's not like we're getting like good games really out of this you got, you got decent basketball they I mean still play last, yeah, it's still rivalries well I mean they would try to but they know it would be guaranteed every year um well, like, see, the article, see, Charles brings up a point saying, I can't see them doing that because of potential damage to the rivalry. The article brings up Utah and BYU and how they still play yeah. technically just about every other year in their non-conference games. They're still getting their rivalry. Um, I just don't like it not being guaranteed. Yeah. Because that's what happened with... Again, but do you think it would almost mean more then? No. At that point, if they're playing, if it's I not mean, an every-year thing? Technically, yeah, but then it would be like... Then it would turn into, like, the whole... You think you're my rival, but I'm not your rival thing. We have a new rival. And it's just like. It'd yeah, be when ASU and Texas Tech are, are playing 54 to 50 games every year, and then <laughs> Arizona is still losing 12 games a year in the Pac-12. Um, also, Joe in the chat giving the exact thing I said like yeah. a month and a half ago. So, But um, I don't uh, know. I just, like, I think Arizona, I think Arizona's proximity to the Phoenix market is significant and them not having that hurts them. Um I I think like and I know the Wildcats people and just around here won't like hearing it, but I don't really care how good Arizona basketball is. ASU is more valuable to other conferences than U of A off of the Phoenix market alone. Yep. Um so I, I think it hurts financially I think it, it would hurt Arizona more than it would Arizona Easy. State. Well, they're both in the article. I mean, it's well written. It brings up a lot of very good points about how both 
are kind of under the Arizona Board of Regents, um, how it would make sense for mm. that, like specifically for both of those teams to go together, how it would make sense for a conference that wants one of these schools to just get both of them. That way you get the entire Arizona market yeah. um, as opposed to just having one of the other. And one of their main quotes, friend of the program, Mike Luke, who's has a friend of the program, Jason Shear, was the main quote in it. Yes. <laughs> Who has been on top of the oh yeah the news in terms Charles of Charles makes a good point though. Not having like because if you had them in different conferences, even if you had the game every year, it would be in September. Like not having it in in November when the teams are like at their hypothetical peak, I don't think it would be the same. Oh, it yeah. wouldn't feel right. Yeah. It wouldn't the be the same. Yeah. Well, would, I mean yeah. you could yeah, you could you could finesse around a off weeks and stuff, but yeah, yeah, that's... they would make it work. I just, I well, think it's an interesting article. Yeah, rivalry week sometimes. That's true. Yeah, and then you get teams like Alabama who play a random like fucking D three school yeah. in the middle of October, and it's like, what are we doing? I don't understand why Alabama does that. Because they hate, can. Well, I hate watching those games. It's stupid. Like, yeah, I don't really nobody cares. On Alabama minus sixty five. Because <laughs> I do that. I do you it. actually? I, yeah, it's just funny. Is what's the point? Like. Yeah, not of the betting, so not of the betting, but of the game. No, like, what is the point of the betting too? Well, but yeah, the game is <laughs> yeah, just really stupid. I don't know. It is what it is. Well, okay. I understand it at the beginning of the season to warm up, but basically preseason. But we're getting closer though. We're getting a lot closer to ASU football, and we're getting a lot. I feel like we're going to be getting a little bit further away from some of these hypothetical discussions and getting more into kickoff, um, which is going to be a lot of fun. We're under it, fifty days I can't until wait to talk about plays. <laughs> like things that have actually happened. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Like oh I thought, I, I was literally thinking about I was daydreaming earlier. And I'm like thinking about when we were like, oh, did you see Soli's tackle? And I was like, I was like, oh, we actually get to talk about real things. Well, yeah, we haven't done it in a while. We haven't had. I mean, we haven't talked about actual football together ever. Mm-mm. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, like I said, under 50 days, the coverage is only gonna ramp up. They've got media day coming next week, uh, so definitely stay tuned for all of our coverage. Around then, I believe it starts on Tuesday, Monday or Tuesday. Um, so, like I said, stick out for that. Um, and if you want to talk ASU football, if you're in the chat, head over to Four Peaks um, next Wednesday because all of our shows are going to be live from Four Peaks as it is every last Wednesday of the month. It is going to be a lot of fun. Um, our show will be live per usual at three o'clock in the afternoon. Um, and while you are at it. Guys, what are you going to be drinking at Four Peaks? Anything you're looking forward to? I'm going to see if they'll let me shotgun a Joy Bus. A joy Bus? Well, I'm definitely down to shotgun Joy Bus. We can chug. Nothing's stopping us from that. Shotgun. It's different. It's different. No, I know, but again, there's we got technology on us. They're probably not going to let us shotgun. That's fair. That's fair. Chug the happy media. Also, uh, enter our Toast of the Month sweepstakes at gophnx.com. You didn't give us our answers. Oh, he said Joy Bus. You didn't let me answer. I assumed it would be Joy Bus. No? no. Peach I mean, I like Joy Bus. But I I'm, I'm, haven't had a hazy in a minute. Okay. No, actually, no. I haven't had a kilt lifter in a minute. That's probably what I'm going to do. You're going to go kilt lifter? I might go kilt lifter, yeah. Okay. I'm going dry bus. It is what it is. But yeah. And <laughs> our toast is. of the month sweepstakes at gophnx.com. Um, when you enter, you get four peaks, $50 gift card, PHNX shirt of your choice, and PHNX annual membership all on the line if you win. Um, and if you're going to be drinking four peaks, be 21 or older and enjoy responsibly. What are you laughing at, man? <laughs> You have a little baby laptop. I need a new Shane and I have big laptops. You have a little baby laptop. I need a new laptop. This is so old. I had this in junior year of high school. Shout out Leah for pointing that out. Okay. Thank you, Leah. I appreciate it. So, (laughs) what? We're doing this thing, huh? Drafting? Mm -hmm. We're going to be drafting logos. So, I have a question. Sports logos, yes. Are we doing this based on. It's up to you because I know what you're going to ask. It's up to you. I think it's like like being cool or being iconic type thing. No, Uh, I'm asking current. Former. You have to specify yeah, if it's specify. an old school logo. What like, year? If you're saying. I don't okay. know if you have to go what year. If you're saying like. Well, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Like you don't um, have to go year. I'm going but, third. That's the okay. smart choice. That's the yeah, right that's choice. What I think. We so I'll go first. That's the right choice. Um, what are Wait. we doing for punishment? Oh. Yeah. That's a tough one. Also, I think we should paint his face. Well, you have to fulfill your punishment. And so do you. I do. I think. I think we should both do a four peak. I'm going to look ridiculous because I got to wear a costume because Johnny. I lost a bit with Johnny. You're gonna wear it. I have to paint your face. I don't know if we do this. We should get somebody to face? paint his face while the show is going on. That seems like it would be yeah. logistically. We should improbable. get Johnny's. Is Johnny gonna be there? His kid's not gonna be there. Oh, <laughs> unlucky. We'll get somebody. Emma, Emma can paint your face. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Okay. You and then need I to pay off in, your. I need to sit in an uncomfy chair. Yeah. We should get him a booster seat to sit in at the. Oh, yep. There we go. Dude, <laughs> there are booster seats there. That's happening. Cool. <laughs> Damn it! Don't draft toilets, kids. Um, <laughs> Anthony Totry. Uh, well, what are we doing punishment wise? We gotta figure out a punishment. Oh yeah, 
Do you have any ideas for punishment for this logo draft? I don't know, because the first thing that came to mind was wear a logo of a team you hate, but we can't do that. So yeah. I mean, if it was a punishment, I think it'd be okay, but I don't know. That's a tough I'll one. brainstorm. Okay. Just don't this lose. Could been a if you remember, let us know. Let us know in the Discord. Yeah, let us know in the chat. Let us know in Discord on social, um, and we will let everybody know what we decide for a punishment, um, and it may get fulfilled next week, because it sounds like there's a lot that are going to be need to Dude, our show could look so chaotic next week. Imagine what the punishment in. is. I'm going to boost I'm going to be in a have your mermaid face, face paint. <laughs> He's going to be dressed in some costume and you're going to be in a booster seat. Drinking a beer. Pure I, chaos. Wait, I saw a tweet of this guy and he said like just went to the theme park with my kid and then had to go get my car emissions test but they had their face painted like a tiger. And That's they, like, amazing. Went, and they didn't have the kid with them when they went to get the emissions. <laughs> so it just looked like they had their yeah. face painted. Bro, that's one of those things where you can't ask. You can't yeah. be like, yo, so what's up with the face paint? But you're definitely, uh, you're you're wondering. Um, okay, so without further ado, we are drafting sports logos. Um, Anthony Totri, you are now on the clock. The serotonin that's released every yeah, time I, I know. do that is incredible. Um, I'm going to go so with the old school ASU Sparky logo. <sighs> okay. I uh, didn't think there was a clear cut number one. Um, so I'm going to, I got, I got to go. That's a good Sparky. one. I got to go with Sparky. Yeah, uh, it's a good one. Um, did, did you think there was a clear cut number one? I, I mean, I, there's much more iconic logos, but for pandering purposes, fantastic. That's choice. good. Um, my first pick is going to be the old uh, Mighty Ducks of Anaheim, Mighty Ducks. Logo. Nice. Great the, one. The duck mask. Okay. okay. Um, well, I'm pandering also. I'm going to go the Sunburst. Suns. Okay. Okay. That's a good one. Well, is it actually? Hold on, because I'm thinking jerseys. I don't know how that's gonna look. Can I look up the logo? See how it looks by itself, real fast. Sure. Is it allowed. Yeah. Okay. To look well, it. What's up. your other pick? Because you can just kind of swap them. Okay. Um, my next pick is gonna be the Grizzlies. Oh. Grizzly logo. The the with the yeah the old, with the actual grizzly yeah. bear. Okay, that's a okay. great one. Those um, jerseys though, those are some of the best jerseys in sports. And we should draft jerseys at some point. I'm gonna go Chicago Bulls. That's a good. So you're one. not drafting Suns. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna wait on it. Okay. You can take it. Um. I am going the fucking Kachina, duh. It's one of the Fuck. best logos in sports. Damn, that's a great pick. Hmm. Give me the Boston Celtics. See, okay, this is this is what I've been playing with in my head because there's a there's a there's the iconic yep, and then there's exactly. the there's the cool exactly because um, like I and I'm not gonna draft it. Um, well, hold on, well, actually, I'm not gonna draft go. it. Yeah, give me yeah. So Boston Celtics, and then on the way back, um, oof, give me the Savannah Banana logo. Okay. Dude, you just you want to lose all of these drafts. What do you um, mean? That's a dope logo. Is the, it not a cool logo? Minor league is a scary territory to get in because there's yeah. something to be said for the, like the recognition with it. Because there's there's a lot of really good minor league teams, and it's just like at a certain point they get a little too memey. Um, with my now third pick, right? Yep. Yeah. I am going the '90s Raptors logo Bastard. with the actual Raptors. Damn it, dude! I'm dominating that's a good right one. now. That's a good one. I feel great about mine. Cool. Um, I'm gonna go with. The Buccaneers Ooh, pirate logo with damn oh, that was on my list. So that's a great one. Okay. Um. Now we get tough. Now we get tough. Getting the nitty gritty of it. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Um. Just give me the Yankees logo. Yeah. So that's the one I was gonna say. Yeah. I like. At the end of the day, it's literally just two letters stacked on top of each other. Well, I was thinking, but it's so iconic. I'm, th mm, I don't know if I'm gonna go with that one or the, the really cool circle one with a bat or the hat on the bat. Oh yeah, you do have to make a decision there. That one's fire. <sighs> Listen, Ryan, I don't know if Sean's cooking. I'm just gonna do the two letters. The two, okay. <sighs> this is tough. Um. Cause I, uh, oh, um, damn, this is tough because I don't know if it is as good of a logo without the context of the jerseys. Exactly. That's what I was battling. Um, also a little bit of, a, mm, fuck, <laughs> um, it's a little bit of a pander. I'll admit, um, I'm going to go, don't do it. <laughs> I'm going to go purple and turquoise. Okay. Um. Okay. Yep. Diamondbacks logo. Diamondbacks logo. Yes. I thought that you was were a gonna struggle take, for you. I thought you were gonna take the old U of A logo. I considered oh, it. Oh no. I just there's no way I can put that on a graphic in no. good conscience. No. 
Am I? I'm up. Last my last two picks. Yep. Um, this is and this I may be the only person that likes this logo. Uh, but I'm going with the old school Chargers logo with the horse and the lightning bolt. Dude, you're never gonna win one of these. I love it. Again. I love it. I love that logo so fucking much. Um, and then give me the penguins. Give me the. Oh, that's a good one. I thought about that one. Yeah. I think it's a little overrated. I really like the Penguins. I think it's a little overrated. I think the 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 badge design has been used so much. It's kind of saturated now. Look at the triangle in the back. I think the the Penguin itself is great, but the badge kind of throws me off a little bit. Okay. Maybe it's because I've looked at it so much. <laughs> this is your last pick, yeah? Yeah. I'm trying to think. What sports do I have? I have some baseball. I have some hockey. And you have... Do you have football? I don't have football. I don't think I have Can basketball. I take the Tour de France logo? <laughs> 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 it's a great logo. The Olympic logo? I want the logo for the, uh, what's it called? Joey Chestnut, the hot dog eating comp- competition. Mm. You're struggling over there. No, I'm not. You've got it? The hot shots. You're really drafting the hot shots? That logo is incredible. It is, it is, but. I think that's the worst pick of the draft. I don't, so far. Dude, no, it's not. What do you think is the, the worst Chargers thing? logo. No, it is not. That's Have you seen time. that logo? Yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. Oh, my gosh. You're uh, so wrong. Uh, I'm kind so of regretting wrong. the pick, though, because I don't know if people are going to know what it is. Well. Can I change it? Because you haven't gotten your next pick. Yeah, go ahead. I'll let um, do it. I'm going the Notre Dame Fighting Irish Irish. Wow. Wow. Really? Wow. That one's iconic. It I is got, iconic. I got all the Catholic and all the Irish votes. Oh. Wow. That's that was a, you. Wow. Okay, one, give me. That's a great one. I'm between Josh. two. This is my last pick. I'm fuck. Be- oh, fuck. Can I change it again? No. Nope. Nope. God damn it. <laughs> I'm between two. I'm between the Heart for Whalers logo. Yep. And I, I I have one that I completely I meant to draft in this last pick and I completely lost. I'm it actually off. I'm I'm on a couple. The Heart for Whalers logo, the Patriots logo. That's the one. Yeah. Yeah. Or the Broncos, Bronco coming out of the D. Yeah. Um, I or the Nuggets skyline logo. Oh fuck! There's oh, a lot of logos. Though. I had a whole list. I just drafted I just... like a a list that was gonna beat Toe Tree. Just that. Yeah, you did. My four afterthought picks. I hate you all, dude. I don't know. I don't know what's. I think any of those picks. Gotta make I don't know what's gonna pull more. Can we get it? Just Leo, add which one do you like can we best? add an extra round to this just for the fun of it? No. Uh, I mean, I'm biased because I'm a hockey fan, yeah. so I like the Whalers, but I've ha- I was literally Googling all those as you were saying them because I can't think of them off the top of my head. Um, Josh Hunt also said the 90s Piston logo, which is good. Oh, give me that! <laughs> yeah! Um, go for it. I don't think <laughs> that's, that's better g- than... I don't think it's the best one I, out of the I think it is. Um, I love the Patriot logo. Sorry, Ryan. I completely forgot that one. Um, by the way, Ryan is one of my scouts. Ryan and my friend Ty did a little scouting for me. Leah Craig did a little scouting for me. I have the best scouting department in the country, arguably. Um, when was the last time you won a draft? That's a great, great point. The last time I used my scouting department. No, I've been, I've been on a tear. By the way, yeah, the last time I like used four or five. The last time my scouting department really did work is a draft I almost certainly should have won, which is the ASU name draft. Um, and you but, didn't win. You know, I and went. Shane a little- literally didn't prepare and won. Yeah, because he went norm. He went toe tree and went full norm. No, I didn't. He went and drafted football why players. Why is that? A, no, why, I didn't. I don't. You're <laughs> such a normie, buddy. I'm, I'm so not, What am I a normie in? <laughs> what am I a normie everything in? Everything we do. What? Explain. E- explain. No, I'll explain. Everything we do. There's, that, actually, I need explanation. I need, explanation. I need. I need facts. That's my explanation. I need examples. That is my explanation. Exa- those are your examples. Yep. Just everything. Yep. Everything you do. Uh, Could I have gone? Would you have accepted the Olympic logo? No. Okay. I didn't. We're doing teams. Yeah. Fair enough. Um. The some some like national programs though national teams have sick logos. Okay, we we have to draft jerseys too at some point. Yeah, I think we will. All okay. right, let's go over. What's yours? Um, I have the Mighty Ducks, okay. the Kachina, the where did I go after that? Diamondbacks. I think that was Raptors. Oh yeah, I went Raptors and then Diamondbacks and then and then, and then Notre Dame. Yeah, okay. yeah, and the Notre Dame pick was good. I didn't even think of that one. I'm shocked. Um, yeah, <laughs> Sparky. Celtics, um, Savannah Bananas, the Chargers old logo, and then what was my last pick? Oh, the Penguins. Uh, I had first pick was the Grizzlies there, the Buccaneer. No, you forgot. You had the Bulls up there. You yeah, you drafted the Bulls, Bulls first. Oh, okay. Bulls, Buccaneers. Um, Bulls, oh, Bucks. the Pistons, and then what was my other one? Oh, the, the Yankees. You got a lot of basketball in there. Mm. 
I he's think, still upset. He's I still feel upset. really I good. About, I feel good about mine, to be honest. I, I think I have a really good. I one. think it's gonna be interesting to see. I just, I think the Chargers think. probably lost this it for you. This is one of those where the g- way the graphics are is really gonna sway people. Well, no, I think this no, is the, no. We specified our no, only one not mobile. the way they are, but like people will make their decisions really by looking at them yeah. all yeah. together. Yeah, because I mean, you can think like I've been thinking of them as you're saying them, but it's hard until I see them all laid out on next list, to each yeah. other. Which one I'm gonna vote? Yeah, this is one where. We have to be over Sean's shoulder and approve. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's just a logo, but I mean, sure. But, like, you get we to see we have to make sure we're getting the Got to right make ones. sure the color's right. Got to make sure it's no. Yeah. All I mean, I, don't, I know. I don't think you're, you're not going to cheat us is what I'm saying. I'm just saying. Yeah. He tried to logo. cheat us on the bird draft by giving himself a baby penguin. Yeah, that was crazy. Listen. I that just, you thought that was acceptable. I just Google it and it came. Like, yeah. It didn't help me. No, wait, I won We that. made you take Did it I off the graphic. One? Who won the bird draft? Not me. I don't think I won. Was it me? I think it was Shane. Uh, it might have been Shane. No, been on the tear I think it weeks. was me. I think, it, I, I, think, think I, I didn't think win the bird. Did I think it was the last one I won, actually. Let me look okay. it up. Well, definitely. Uh, Damn, it's you, been a fucking minute. Since if, I won. if you want to have a voice I have two in terms teams, of all of these, not in terms lose. of all these logos, um, definitely go vote and go follow us at PHNX underscore Sun Devils on social. You can follow me at Anthony underscore Totri. You can follow Shane at Shane Deef. You can follow Sean DePaz at Sean underscore DePaz. Yeah, Sean, you did win. Jiggly buff as always. One more plug, head over to gophnx.com today and become a member of the family because when you do, either a free t-shirt from the locker or your first month for 50 cents just for signing up. Thanks again for listening, guys, and we will be back with an audio show on Thursday. But for now, peace.